Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of Strixhaven Spoilers. Day one had a ton of surprises, including a Simic doubling commander named Adrix and Nev. So if you haven't seen my episode on Double Trouble, make sure you go check that one out. And yesterday, we also got a Boros commander that generates card advantage and can even ramp. So if you haven't seen that episode on Ozgear, make sure you go check it out as well. But this quick take is going to be on Shadrick Silverquill, the Elder Dragon from Silverquill. It's a really exciting commander that takes Orzhov into a completely different direction that it pretty much never goes. Now remember on these quick takes that I am making them quite quickly, so if I make a mistake, my apologies, it's bound to happen. So with all that said, let's jump into it. So Silverquill is a 2-5 Elder Dragon that has Flying and Double Strike that costs 3 White Black. It has, at the beginning of combat, on your turn you may choose 2. Each mode must target a different player. Target player creates a 2-1 White and Black Inkling creature token with Flying. Target player draws a card and loses 1 life, or target player puts a plus plus 1 counter on each creature they control. There is actually a lot going on here, so let's break it down. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may choose 2. So you don't have to pick anything, but if you do decide to pick something, you've got to pick two of them. Each mode must target a different player. So of course, you cannot just target yourself with two of these because yeah, that'd be incredibly powerful. So most of the time you're going to be targeting yourself as well as one opponent. So you can use this effect in a couple of different ways. First off, you can use this as a political tool. If one player is really far behind, you can help them catch up. You can agree with a player that you'll give them an inkling as long as they never use it to attack you. And of course, there are a multitude of other deals that you can make. Now, obviously, you can also use this in a non-political way. For example, if an opponent has no creatures and you say, hey, you know what? You get to put a plus plus one counter on all your creatures. And they're like, thanks. You didn't give them any benefit and you still got something out of it with the other two modes. Now, there are a lot of different directions that you can take this deck focusing on certain modes. I mean, this commander can be a token generator, essentially a Phyrexian arena or a counter distributor. But now let's jump into some cards that can work really well with this commander. First off, let's talk about some cards that can help incentivize your opponents to go elsewhere. If you've given an opponent a bunch of inklings or a bunch of counters, you're going to want them to attack elsewhere. And again, of course you can make that deal ahead of time, but you can also incentivize them with things like Thunderstaff and Crown of Doom. As long as Thunderstaff is untapped, if a creature would deal damage to you, you prevent one of that damage. And by paying two and tapping it, attacking creatures get plus one plus zero until end of turn. So opponents are less incentivized to attack you, especially with inklings that you might be giving them because they're gonna be doing less damage. In fact, half the damage that they would normally do. But if they go somewhere else with their attackers, you can help them by pumping their team. So again, if you give someone a bunch of inklings, they're gonna be hitting for three instead of two. And then Crown of Doom isn't as flexible, but it can help those inklings hit even harder. It says whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn, and you can pay two and target player other than Crown of Doom's owner gains control of it, activates ability only during your turn. So basically you get this in play and then you just give it to someone else. Players are then incentivized to attack that player until they can get rid of it and give it to someone else other than you. And again, keep in mind that your commander has double strike, so it's going to be hitting for eight on that player. And then of course, every single inkling out there is going to hit for four. Another way to incentivize opponents to attack a certain player is going to be with something like Curse of Disturbance. It's an aura curse that says enchant player, whenever enchanted player is attacked, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Each opponent attacking that player does the same. So basically, hey, go attack that person. When you do, I get a zombie and you get a zombie. Giving your opponent's creatures or pumping their creatures and incentivizing them to attack elsewhere can be a very powerful thing. And of course, you can also pelleport up with things like Ghostly Prison and Reverence. 
Ghostly Prison says, Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control that's attacking you. An extra two per creature tax for attacking you is usually going to be enough to deter attacks and send them elsewhere. And then Reverence says, Creatures with power two or less can attack you. So creatures like those Inklings won't be able to get to you. There are a ton of great Pelleport effects, and one of my favorites has got to be Chronomantic Escape. It says, until your next turn, creatures can attack you, exile Chronomantic Escape with three time counters on it. Basically, every three turns, you can't be attacked. And then something like Batwing Room can be a very punishing card as well. It says, prevents all combat damage to be dealt this turn if white was spent to cast Batwing Broom. Each player loses one life for each attacking creature they control if black was spent to cast Batwing Broom. Basically, this is an incredibly flexible card for a lot of situations. Let's say that you gave one player a bunch of Inklings, and it's getting to the end of the game where it's just you and that player, and now they've decided to attack you with all those Inklings. Well, you just fog and say you're losing a lot of life as well. Or in another scenario, this can be the ultimate betrayal card. Let's say that you agree to give one player a lot of Inklings, but the only rule is that they can't attack you with them. They swing out at another threatening player, and then you just cast this for Black Black. So you're not preventing any combat damage, so that player that's getting attacked is going to get hit for a lot. And on top of that, you're draining the other player for quite a bit as well. Obviously, you need to be careful when you do this, but if done correctly, it can be a game-ending play. That attacking player might be left with almost no life, and you can easily finish them off. Isn't teamwork great? And speaking of teamwork, well, let's talk about some other cards that allow you to just reap the benefits while not giving out anything. Curse of Death's Hold is an aura curse that says enchant player, creatures enchanted player controls get minus one, minus one. So now you go to combat and you say, oh, here's an inkling, why don't you have it? Oh, oh, it died. I'm sorry. Oh, my bad. So essentially now you've got an option to always have a benefit and no downside. And one that is potentially even better with this commander is Ethereal Absolution. It says creatures you control get plus plus one, and creatures your opponents control get minus one minus one. So if you make yourself some Inklings, they're going to be even deadlier. But if you make your opponent an Inkling, it's gone. Again, you can focus this commander in a lot of different directions, but if you want to go on the I create Inkling tokens for myself direction, you definitely want to consider some other anthems as well. So of course, Intangible Virtue is a fantastic one to include. It says creature tokens you control get plus plus one and have Vigilance. So again, now your Inklings not only hit harder, but they can also stay back and block for you. And then of course, Cathar's Crusade is a great one for this deck as well. It says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus plus one counter on each creature you control. So with each Inkling that you get, all your creatures get bigger, including all your Inklings and your commander as well. And again, your commander has double strikes, so those counters on it are essentially doubly as effective. And speaking of doubly as effective, let's talk about Necropolis Regent. It says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put that many plus plus one counters on it. So essentially now every single time that you hit your opponent with an inkling, it's going to double in size. But your commander benefits even more because of double strike. For this scenario, let's just say that your commander has two power to start. The first hit hits your opponent for two damage and you get two counters on your commander. Then your second hit hits your opponent for four damage and you get four more counters on it. So you just hit your opponent for six damage in total and you've got six plus plus one counters on your commander. I think you might be able to see where this is going. You swing again, you hit an opponent for eight and then 16 and then they're very, very dead. So yes, with the right cards, you can easily take your opponents out with commander damage. Sublime Archangel is another fantastic card for this deck. It has Exalted and other creatures you control have Exalted. So again, if you've made yourself a bunch of Inklings and then you just attack with your commander, it's going to get bigger based on the number of creatures you have. And with Double Strike, it's going to be hitting for a ton. So even just including a simple equipment like Black Blade Reforge can be great in a deck like this. Just putting this on your commander at the very least is going to turn your commander into a two-shot kill. Now you also are going to want to protect your commander as well as the rest of your team, so something like Safara Sky's Blade can be great in a deck like this. She has, you may pay white and tap four untapped creatures you control with flying rather than pay this spell's mana cost. She has flying and lifelink and other creatures you control with flying have indestructible. So if you've got a couple of inklings in play, you can get this out for just one mana and then she protects the rest of your entire team. Oh, and again, on top of that, she's just a 7-7 seven, seven with flying and lifelink, so there's that. Now with this commander, you also have some ways to take advantage of all those plus plus one counters that you can dish out to your team. Abzan Battle Priest says, each creature you control with a plus plus one counter on it has lifelink. Mare Ek Nightblade does the same but for Death Touch, and Anok Bond Kid does the same but for First Strike. So yeah, being able to go into combat and give your entire team lifelink, Death Touch, or First Strike, or all of them, is an incredibly powerful thing. Again, Death Touch on your commander essentially makes your commander unkillable in combat unless it's going up against Indestructible or whatnot. And you can also benefit heavily from a card like Basri's Lieutenant. 
It has, when it or another creature you control dies, if it had a plus plus one counter on it, create a 2-2 two, two white knight creature token with vigilance. So essentially, this is board white protection for your team, and all you have to do is go to combat and give a plus plus one counter to all your creatures. If someone wipes the board, congratulations, you've got a bunch of vigilant knights. Another way to protect your team, though, repeatedly, comes with Cauldron of Souls. It has tap, choose any number of target creatures, each of those creatures gains persist until end of turn. So if that creature died, if it had no minus one, minus one counters on it, it comes back into play with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Now, obviously, this won't save your tokens, but it will save any of your non-token creatures. They come back and, oh no, they're slightly smaller, but I go to combat and I get plus plus one counters to all my creatures, and they eliminate those minus one, minus one counters. Essentially, for this deck's purposes, this is repeatable board wipe protection. But now let's talk about some other commanders that might want Silver Quill in the 99, and let's start with Queen Marchesa. Queen Marchesa is the queen of politics, so yeah, adding in another very political card can make that deck even more politicky. I don't think that's an actual term, but for Magic's purposes today, it is. Again, there's a lot of different ways with Silver Quill that you can wheel and deal, and Queen Marchesa is all about that. Another potential commander that might want Silver Quill is Thales Reverent Medium. She has at the beginning of each end step create X11 white spirit creature tokens with flying, where X is the number of tokens you created this turn. So if you're going in that token generation direction, Silver Quill might be a good one to add. And another potential commander for a token direction is Tesa Orzov Scion. She has sacrifice three white creatures, exile target creature, and whenever another black creature you control dies, create a 1 1 white spirit creature token with flying. Those inklings that you create are white and black. So you can sacrifice them to exile things and get those spirits too when they die. But now let's talk about some pricing considerations that you might want to upgrade this deck with, and the first one that I want to bring up is quite mean and quite pricey with Elish Norn. Elish Norn is a huge anthem and anti-anthem. She gives other creatures you control plus two plus two and creatures your opponents control minus two minus two. So again, if you made yourself a bunch of inklings, they are now four threes, so they're gonna be hitting really hard. And if you decide to give an opponent an inkling, it is most definitely dead. Another potential pricey consideration that you might want to consider is Anoint in Procession. It says if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. So again, if you're going in that inkling token generation direction, this can make you a lot of inklings. And keep in mind that it says under your control, so it doesn't double up any inkling production for other players. But now let's wrap things up and talk about my final thoughts on this commander. I really like the direction of this Elder Dragon. It's not overpowered, has a lot of flexibility, and can be built in a lot of different directions. It's a fantastic political commander that lets you wheel and deal when you want to, and lets you use some other things to not make such even deals. Oh yeah, and with just a pump effect or two, you can two-shot a player very quickly as well with your flying double strike Elder Dragon. So there's that as well. Definitely an interesting commander though, and I'm not exactly sure how popular this one's gonna be, but I've got a lot of hope for it. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.